Well, have, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Joshua Sohn. This is Composing Live, where we show how music is made. Well, how's everyone do, doing today? It's been a busy week for me. I've been working on uh, a film um, and just uh, trying to juggle a different uh, a handful of projects as I'm doing these live streams. And um, I was uh, just for a, a split second deciding if I should cancel it, but I, I, after a little bit of uh, today and, and going through some of the projects, I decided to stick with it because I love doing this. And also, this is a good chance for me to uh, just keep getting better as time goes on. And uh, one of these uh, reasons why I do this live stream is to use it as like a research and development lab, R&D lab, where... Um, we can explore different uh, types of music, whether that's from the classical era or pop music or even just original stuff. And, um, and, and so this is kind of focused around that. And today is no exception. We will be going over a big masterpiece. It's called uh, Mavlast or um, The Moldau by Biedrich Smetana. And I'm super excited to uh, get this going. So we'll explain uh, the project in a little bit more detail. I just want to just make sure that uh, my sound is working. And I, I also have some uh, friends here saying, hello. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Uh, job and money is always good. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, having food on the table is always nice. So... Um, what I was going to say before starting is just be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Share it to your friends, family, uh, anyone that you think would uh, benefit from something like this. If, if they want to uh, learn how music is made, um, you know, this is a great way to just show them kind of like a walkthrough of that and give them a better idea of what a composer has to, to do in, in a modern day society. So... With that being said, let's get started. I'm going to uh, go ahead and talk about this project. Um, it's been something that I've been working on just here and there, tinker tinkering around. And I realized that, um, you know, there's free uh, scores that you can find on imslp.org, I believe. And uh, the one that I found for the Smetana um, score is is actually from Boozy and Hawks. If you guys are familiar with Boozy and Hawks, they're one of the big publishers for um, uh, concert music. So I, I took that. I also went on to different um, websites. There's a website called like Classical Music dot or Classical Music Archives dot org or something like that, and. Um, I, I just kind of dug through and, and grabbed as many MIDI files as I could. Um, and so that the the whole goal or, or idea was to just recreate some of these big masterpieces uh, through the computer and, and just doing it inside of my DAW. And this would be a great way to experiment with my uh, sample library and virtual instruments that I already have. And just put it to the test to see how good we can make it sound. It's really important to um, try to make your mock-ups sound as good as possible. I mean, realistically, if you're doing uh, Hollywood-type work, you're going to um, get the funding to actually hire an orchestra. But um, for anyone that's starting out, this is kind of the pathway to get there. I mean, this is not the only pathway, but it is a... Um, really common way to go about it. So um, what my job today is to just uh, get everything kind of set in order. Uh, one is to talk about the instrumentation of this piece and uh, just a little re uh, a bit, tidbits of why I picked this one. Um, th this is a piece that really spoke to me when I was a college student back, you know, in, I don't know, age, uh, <laughs> this is like this, I feel like it's like, 15 years ago now since I went to college but yeah um, this was a, a really pivotal time and and listening to this piece really um, opened my mind on what you can do with the orchestra um, one thing that you'll notice is there's a lot of woodwinds in the beginning with the flutes right here and then you can see over here this is kind of a woodwind feature 
or a flute feature, I should say, but and then clarinets come in and so on. So um, for anyone that's not familiar with reading a score, um, this is what a score would look like, a big concert score at least. Um, it's, it's, it always starts in uh, woodwinds and then goes to brass. You have uh, then your timpani, percussion, and then uh, strings. Sometimes if there's choir, the choir would be somewhere in the middle, but that's generally uh, a concert order. So uh, let's talk about instrumentation. Instrumentation is um, the piccolo flute, two flutes, two oboes, two clarinets, um, two bassoons, and then you have, uh, I think this is in German, I believe, or I'm not sure which, uh, either German or Italian. I believe German, I want to say. Um, let's see, timpani. If it said pakken, I would think that's German. But um, So trombe is, is trumpet, tromboni, alto ten and tenor. Interesting. There's alto, uh, alto tenor, I mean, excuse me, alto trombone, and then you have a bass trombone. So alto, alto and tenor, bass. That's interesting. And then you have your timpani, triangle, your bass drum, uh, this is harp, arpa, and then your strings. So this um, today for for today's goal is, is uh, to kind of get this in order. Um, I actually have the score in front of me as well, just on my iPad, and um, I'll, I'll kind of do my best to hover over that and look over the notes. Um, I can kind of scroll back and forth as well. So yeah. Um, and Sam says, uh, I always learn a lot, but always remember health comes first. Hey, I, I always appreciate that. Um, yeah, taking care of yourself is very important. So let's talk about uh, the instrumentation in the DAW now. So if I need uh, all that uh, that we just looked at, let's go ahead and open them up. I, 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 so, I sort of started that, um, but I thought we'd just do that together here so let's go ahead and add some spitfire stuff I, I i invested in some spitfire over the last six months or so and so i'm gonna uh, test mainly the spitfire stuff but we're not gonna just use spitfire we'll, we'll kind of mix and match and, and see what sounds best so um at least for the 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 really um important ones we'll, we'll kind of experiment with that I think we're okay with just keeping a piccolo of with Spitfire then we have the Spitfire flutes they sound great um, I love the room sound that comes with the woodwinds so I, I, I think it's probably the best ones uh, in my opinion the Berlin stuff is really good but I don't actually have any Berlin um, so this is kind of a, a, a good al a substitute for that so we have oboe two oboes so let's actually open up another oboe um, the, the Claire stuff is really good, but it generally sounds, um, not like a, a concert oboe. It sounds more like a solo type oboe. So what I'll do is let's just open up, um, the East West stuff. And I believe, do I have that? Yes. I have an East West oboe right there. Let's turn that guy on. Now let's just test this out. So the, the range on the piccolo for this one is it's fairly high, um, but it only goes like about a seventh. It doesn't even go an octave. That's interesting. Um, so uh, just in case, actually, now I have second thoughts, I, I will open up this one as well. See, see the difference, though? This one it doesn't sound as harsh. And if I go over here, it's, I mean, it's louder for one, but it's also a lot harsher in tone. So th those are kind of things that um, we'll look for as we do this. The clarinets is uh, the next one. So we have clarinet solo. Let's also open up the Spitfire clarinet two. So, I mean, uh, this is actually two clarinets and that's fine. We, we can kind of pretend that's like first clarinet. This is first clarinet. This is second clarinet and so on. Oh, sorry about that. I hope you're not blasting that, uh, the speakers there uh, on the pic on the piccolo there. Oh, man. 
that can uh, really get anyone to lose their hearing. So we have the bassoon. Um, the solo bassoon is good. Oops, actually, I'm trying to do this. Boom. All right. So we our woodwinds are set, it looks like. Um, the next one, going back to this screen, would be uh, your your brass, uh, which the alto trombone, I'm, I'm curious. I don't think I have any alto trombone in my template, which um, I would be sad if that's the case. Uh, <laughs> but let's look over here real quick. We got our trombones, um, some Jaeger stuff. So for classical, I think, the Spitfire is the way to go. Jaeger is great, but it's it's somewhat limited in terms of the the um, the tonality. So uh, what I'm trying to say is like Jaeger is more for trailers and it was designed for that. So it doesn't have a whole lot of um, different crossfades and layers that you can go from that's not gonna sound like it's a trailer type trombone. Anyways, so we have the uh, trombones we have trumpets we need to get lost in trumpets now I, I actually try to get my um, template in the DAW in score order as well as you can see however I like to put trumpets above the horns whereas in the score you'll see it's actually the opposite um, let's see here I'm just gonna keep opening this one why not the six just for the hell of it uh the sonore trumpets sound awesome by the way and the sonore horns as well so i'm going to actually include that and sonore is a cine samples um i highly recommend it for more soft tones and things like that okay with that being said <laughs> sorry about that sam so um let me just play through these Okay, these are also, oh, that's why my keyboard has an octave. This one um, is not on. Uh, why not? I'll just do all of those, make sure those are sounding as well. Okay, boom. And then the last is uh, bass trombone, right? So bass trombone, Let's use the Spitfire as well. So anytime you see that SFSB, that Spitfire uh, Symphonic Brass. Have I heard Mahler? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, that, there's a lot of great Mahler pieces. Uh, my, my favorites are the Fifth Symphony and the Second Symphony. Uh, really good stuff. Let's see. Actually, I, I in one of my uh, tracks that I wrote in the album that will hopefully come out soon. I'm still waiting on some things, but um, one of them was a kind of a choral uh, orchestral piece that's um, a, a bit uplifting sounding, and it, it has some of that uh, Mahler resurrection type sound, like on that really big climatic feel. Uh, I was I was inspired to write something similar. So uh, we have trombone. Next is we have the timpani, um, triangle, and the bass drum. But I'm just going to really quick uh, just go down and glance down at the percussion. Sometimes they just, uh, at, and I'm a percussionist, so I, um, looking at the scores, sometimes you'll just see like random other instruments pop out of nowhere, like a bell or um, snare drum so I just wanted to see if anything changes I, I don't believe there might be snare drum I'll uh, see there's a crash so with um, Piatti there uh, let's see and I'll see uh, we, we can kind of um, leave it at you know to some degree uh, we can just start now but I just want to make sure not caught by surprise as I'm doing this. Okay, so uh, definitely we'll need triangle. Um, we'll do crash symbols, which are down here. So I already think I think I have most of that. Uh, the only thing I don't have is triangle. So let's go ahead and load up some triangle. All right, 
Um, let's do one of these two. I'll do a sentence sample one. And then uh, timpanis are loaded. Okay, harp. Uh, I, I don't believe I have harp. Let's go ahead and check real quick. Let's see. So let's just do this one. I really like the harp from Elysium, which is sound iron. Um, and they have some good stuff. So they have some glissandos um, patches that I'm going to also turn on. And just make sure that I have that ready to go in case I need that. Uh, the other thing are strings. So on the string note, um, I already have the Pacific stuff, which sounds great. And then we have here um, the Jaeger. I don't know if, if we'll use Jaeger at all, but why not just keep uh, two tracks for that? I'm thinking also resources for my computer here, but uh, let's go ahead and um, go to the, uh, the, the string parts as well. So for all of these fun little instruments down here, um, I think I'm going to turn on the Spitfire core stuff, which whoo, right here, boom. Maybe the performance legatos would be separate. And I might have to just kind of focus on these guys for, for today. Uh, one to layer with on that might be the, uh, maybe East West, um, I don't know. Uh, we'll think about that. Maybe for now, let's just turn on these guys. Oops. Wrong button. Okay. Great. So now that uh, we have the instrumentation ready to go, the next step is to go through um, the, the song. So what I have done in the past, and this is just for anyone that wants to go through something, it's... Uh, and, and, and this is more of like a transcription. So this is not like in, in some ways is I'm not like transcribing this by ear. But if if we were to recreate it, you can consider this a transcription. One of the big steps on transcriptions and I think I made some videos about in the past is you uh, want to make a tempo track that goes throughout the entire piece. Um, now, I uh, cheated here. And I actually uh, condensed this piece down. So right around here, I, I splice, or maybe it was around 90 something, I splice this section to the last, uh, let's say, three minutes of music uh, and, and just kind of tied that together. So there, there's a whole, there's like maybe five minutes or more, if not more, uh, of, of material that I, I've excluded on this one. And then I, I just bounced this track out. But it's actually pretty seamless. Um, let me uh, show you what I mean. So if I go right, let's say here, right there. OK, so this is where that, that big kick is. But um, Okay, so I, I tied that together, and, and to be exact, um, I wrote it down here. I took out, it looks like, measures 80 to <laughs> 270. So that's like almost um, 200 measures that I took out. Uh, but I, I did that. It, it was kind of a, you know, I, I was, I, I, it was a compromise for me. I, I don't think I can do a whole series that um, would be like maybe four or five episodes if it was the entire piece. So I, I made a compromise and I thought, okay, maybe I can tackle this in four to five episodes if I shortened it. And now it's uh, from here, if I were to change the timing, let's just do that real quick. I'm curious. So from here to the end, that is six minutes and 20 seconds so <laughs> so our goal again is to try i mean i don't know if we can even do that much uh but my my goal is to do that and see how far we can go with this so um without further ado what i'll do is i'll, I'll play you the track and i'll kind of turn on and off the click track so you can hear um, what i've done with that 
me try again. You see how that's all aligning. So you get the idea, and as, as the time goes on, um, it gets faster and faster. As you can see, there's this nice little arc where it's you know quiet, it's a little slower, and as it gets louder, it also goes faster. That, that's pretty natural. Um, um, there's a lot of breathing room. The reason why you want to do a transcription like this and uh, put the tempo tracks along with it is so that I can A and B what my progress uh, compared to a professional orchestra um, and uh, on that note the orchestra the recording that i use from the orchestra is from the berlin symphony or berlin orchestra and this was um, conducted by herbert von carrion when he was the conductor at that time anyways i i think he's one of the best and so i thought that would be um the one to do for this okay so with that being said, <laughs> this is where the fun part happens. It's also uh, it's excruciatingly uh, slow and, and uh, time-consuming. There's two ways to do this. We can write it in um, um, with the piano, or we, uh, we can also just uh, um, program it in. So if I were to play it, um, it, I might need to use two different tempo tracks. One would be uh, for... Let's see, for Herbert. Oh, th this is that one. Okay, so then if I were to make a new one, we can like go a lot slower, so to speak, and just um, dish it out that way because I'm not going to be able to sight read this stuff. But let's see, if I go 60, okay, so um, currently uh, the track is around 170, right? Or 107. So then let's go to this and 60 and let's, I'm just going to practice that with the flute that I have so the first notes on this are flutes as you can see here and then um, we also have some strings so I'm just wondering what we should start with first maybe let's start with the easier stuff let's do the harp and the violins um, so going back let's see how this would sound harp with a short sound is interesting I'm actually curious how that would be, because um, I don't know if, if my library has that. Uh, let's see, where are ya? Okay, harp is right here. Did I not turn you on? There you go. Okay, so we have E. You know, on this one, let's let's actually go to the uh, full tempo. I can do this one. This is easy. All right, so let's go again. One. One, two. All right. Here's measure ten, 
and I don't see anything else actually. <laughs> That's it for the heart. So um, let's go ahead and just quantize these, make it easy. And then I think I might have played the second one a little too quiet. Okay, let's do that. Uh, the strings real quick. I can go probably um, two pages at a time for this one. Easy. So this one here is. Um, let's see, violin one, violin two, violin one, violin two. I guess we'll just do it in here for now. So we'll do the chords on violin one and violin two. Let's start with violin two first, and we have this on pizzicato. So we have like that. Oh yeah, but it actually it's not on down B, is it? It's on the uh, last beats here. As you can see, um, it's on the one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that's interesting the way it's notated actually. One, oh yeah, it's on six, okay. Yeah, okay, so anyway, let's go to that point and let's play it in. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay, and then here, and I messed up on eight. It's uh, goes down to G, so it's a big jump. Is that the low snip? No, it's this G. Goes down to that G. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, something like that. And then from that G to A. One, two. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then back down to where am I? A. Three, four, five, six. Let me try that again. interesting chord right there that's a E C sharp and then the uh, violin above it is a sharp G okay anyways I'm um, gonna finish this little line here so then we have after that 14 yeah like that it's not quantized but let me try that again I can't talk and play I'll I will shut up Okay, so that's the first two pages. And um, with that being said, it's not quantized. It's, um, and I don't know if I want to keep it like so hard quantized, but I do want to make sure it's, it's in time. <laughs> so right now, um, we don't want the triplet grid on, but we do want to just be the, see the eighth notes, because this is a, um, program to be in, in 6 8 and as you can see it's kind of funky I'm gonna move this over some of these notes over here and do that but I'm gonna do soft quantizes um, for most of these okay cool so just, I'm just gonna glance through it and just make sure that I I have all my notes on the right points and right locations like let's say I'm just glance at 15 I have a B C cool and then that's it for now. Okay, so th those are the first 16 measures of violin two done. Here is violin one. And I don't know if there's a quick way to do this uh, with my fingers moving around. Um, one problem is it, this uh, iPad, I don't know if you can see it here, it's, uh, it's on horizontal or landscape mode. So if I were to do it the other way, like a portrait mode, it'd be a little bit better, but um, that's fine. Sam says, I found Christian Henson uses tempo like expression and dynamics. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. 
uh, it's really important. You, you, I, I do too, to some degree, depending on how expressive you want it. It's really important to, to get that tempo going. And this is a good uh, teacher too. When, when you're doing other pieces from professional works, it's good to see how things push and pull a little bit. Um, of course, these are only um, measures or bars that are plotted in. So it's not a... a 100% representation, but you can still see how it kind of pushes and pulls. Okay, here is violin one. Okay, same thing, got to change this to pizzicato. How's the volume there? Is that pretty good for you guys? Um, here we go, one. Um, you know what, let me try recording that first. Oh, and then uh, yeah, 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 yeah. let's try um, do that again one more time with let's see here oh, okay it's pretty high two three four oh, oops <laughs> I went an octave higher is that right Oh no, that's that one, sorry. Okay, and so on. Let's just keep going. We'll, we'll just hash this out. And then, sorry, my sight reading is not as good as it was. I'm trying to see where I'm at. This is measure nine. Ah, okay, I see what I did wrong. One. Is that right? Yeah, that's a D and B flat. Okay, moving on. And we have E and C, uh, just C natural. One, two, and then one. And then um, wrong measure. Let's push this over. Bum bum. And this one as well. Okay. Okay. And that's the end of that 16th measure. Cool. All right, so let's just check the notes real quick. It should be F sharp. Yes, got my accidentals. Woohoo! I earned a gold star there. <laughs> so on this uh, 14, just looking at the notes, this should be B uh, natural. I played that wrong. And uh, this is something I need to be super on top of is make sure, making sure I don't have wrong notes. Um, let's see, you have, uh, yeah, E and B flats. Okay, so I think I played this one one or two measures bef before I should have. Bum, bum. Okay, so something was funky. Let's look at five. Here's nine. Okay. Okay, so this was right at ten. Bum bum. Um, and then bum. This should be. I, I'm missing two notes. Cool. 
and maybe a little louder on that last part as I bring that up. Okay, so let's go ahead and play that together real quick. And we'll see if that soft quantize messed up anything up. That's a big jump, huh? All right, cool. And, and this is split, as you can see, there's some divisi going on. Um, if it's divisi, that's something to keep in mind. Maybe we'll, we'll bring some of that down. I, I just felt that could have been a bit uh, loud and then compared to the violin too I can maybe slightly bring that up okay all right now that we have that in order so this is the first 16 measure let's do the the flutes uh, flute one is and hey guys shard uh, says I'm not used to listening to smetana so this is quite interesting cool yeah, no, it's uh, I'm not too familiar with his other stuff to be honest, um, but you know he's kind of like a um, a legend when it comes to this piece. Uh, I don't think any anyone can touch it. And as far as um, other composers uh, in in our era, I feel like everyone has um, to some degree been influenced by this piece, uh, whether it's in movies or whatnot. So. That's another reason why I picked it, because it's, it's just uh, very influential. Um, okay, so let's look at the flute part here. This would probably be best on the Spitfire flute solo. Although, does it say anything about duets? It looks like there will be a duet coming in shortly. Okay. Interesting. So um, over here, if you look, you have uh, the vo ver the first voice, I should say, is uh, down and the second voice is going up. So there are two flutes coming in. Uh, the second flute comes in on the third measure. It's kind of hard to read this and play, to be honest. Um, it's kind of a bummer. I wish uh, I had a little bit better sight reading chops to, to just hash this out. But let me practice this and see how we do. This is a key of E minor, it looks like. And then on the fourth measure goes Okay, I, I think I handled that. <laughs> now the question is, can I do it in time or should I go a little slower? Uh, I'm I'm curious if how I would do just uh, on on the full tempo for now. Let's try. It. You know what I need to do though is probably go back another measure when I start this, so I just have a little bit more time. Although the the um the timing's funky, so. Let me just move this back a little bit more, like that. Oh, sorry, let's see here. Oh, well, there you go. I, uh, I flubbed it. Let's try that again. Oh, I see, it's acting kind of funky right now. All right, here we go. The first time I, I held the note too long. That's a little too quiet. Oh, man. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to do this.
okay, I can do this. Just give me a few tries. Da, 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 da. All right. Oh my gosh, let's do this again. <laughs> All right, come on. Okay, so there you go. Um, volume it could be much louder, so let's let's just bring this up. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna do this real quick so you guys can hear this a little bit in more detail. I'm gonna turn on my limiter here. Since this is a quiet section, I'm just gonna boost this up about four dBs or so. Okay. All right. So this is a, this is probably the best uh, attempt that I can do for today. Uh, let's see. Da 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 da. And it's not perfect, as you can see. That I don't know what the heck happened there. Ba da da ba da da ba da da da. Okay. So let's look at how this would align. Do 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 do. If this is in six eight and they are having this in um, 16th notes, we're going to just kind of fudge this over a little bit. Okay, like that. Cool. So there's that. Okay, and these are all the legatos, so let's change that over and um, let's try. Oh, I'm gonna turn this guy off. Where is it? This one. Okay, so let's draw in some curves. Yeah. All right. So that da 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 uh, is good, but let's look at the. Maybe well, let's just get kind of get a head start on the second one, and on this one we could probably just use this, I guess, and uh, this will be the higher octave. So on three, and and this is where I'm I'm just debating. Maybe I'll to save um, heartache and time. <laughs> let's actually just copy this over here. Um, legato is good to get the transitions and stuff but you know it's not overlapping there's there's not a lot a lot of uh, good uh, performance capture here that I did so a lot of this will be more programming I think over on this part we have G A uh, B natural A B, C. Okay, and then let's look at this one. Is that right? Okay, so let's see what we are doing wrong. That doesn't sound right to me. So on this, I have uh, G, A, B, A, B, C, D, uh, back to B, and then Okay, da da, I see. So we have. And then the second part goes. Second page. <laughs> I know what I did wrong. There you go. Okay. So that last note's a B.
Okay. Yeah. So there, oh, there's that. Let's turn both of these into legato. Okay. Cool. And that's uh, five. Next. Um, let's put a little bit more reverb onto these guys. Maybe even that much. And then we might want to EQ some of this. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. Um, this is uh, two different channels. Okay. So if I were to... I'm just going to play and mess around. Just going to you know, just give it a little bump on that section. Same with this one. And also, I need to add more reverb as well. It's a different channel. Let's go negative 12. Yeah. All right. So let's keep going. We're going to hash this out, go to measure 16, and, and we're good to go on that part at least. So um, let's do measure 5. Let's go to the first one again. And now we kind of have a better idea of what's going on here. And then it goes. Yeah. Uh, so since this is a repetitive one, let's just do that. And that. Okay, measure seven. Same thing. Ba -da 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 -da. And measure eight goes. Interesting. So it's similar, but it's not. It's an octave higher. Well, that didn't sound for some reason. Hello. Why is it doing that? I don't hear anything. Oh, you know what? I probably did something funky. Nope. Okay, no. Nope. That's so weird. Oh, now it's working. Okay. So is it da 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 da? No, it's not. It's actually starting on D. <laughs> Let's put the uh, F sharps in. Yeah, now it's not playing. That's so weird. Okay, so that's good. Um, I'm not sure why it's not kicking in. So I'll just for uh, a little guess, I'm guessing um, putting some uh, faders in and also that. Okay, good. Let's also bring that down. So yeah, da 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 da, and okay. Da 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 da. So, let's keep these short, actually. More like that. Okay, moving on. Da, da, da. One thing that I notice is when I'm drawing it in and um, playing it, I always have to change the articulation for it to like, kick in. I, I think that's what's causing the issue there. Um, D, E, D, or B, E, D. Let's copy this one over here. This is B, C, D, C, D, E. And then F sharp. 
Okay. Um, maybe we'll do the faders after. So let's just program all the notes for them first. Uh, should be an E. Da. And then. Let's use this one. Okay, and then we have yeah, that's right. Okay, let's put it in. F G A. We'll also, um, if we have time, we'll spend a moment to analyze the chords because I'm curious what's going on in this. Yeah, like that. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so cool. In context, um, you know, you don't really think of it, but when you slow it down, you're like, whoa, that's a cool change there. Okay, then you have um, measure 14. Is that right, Matt? Okay, let's put this or push this over and do that. Okay, and then make it legato. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a lot more work to do like this, but I kind of like capturing it and try not to do too much there. But okay, so you have that next. Let's just uh, copy that. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da da. B. Yeah, that's right. Just sound it off for some reason. And then. Um. Da 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 da. Last part. Oh, interesting. So this is kind of the end of the flute feature and then the, the clarinets come in, but the flutes still play. Interesting. Like that. Oh, is that right? Da da da. Something. Maybe I rush that a bit. Anyways. I'm just laughing because I was like, um, ridiculous how much work this takes. Okay. All right. So you have this. Cool. All right. Moving on. Um, we can uh, shape the faders later in a second. Let's just uh, program in the flutes of the other side. So I'm just kind of thinking out loud how I should do this. Um, this is measure five or measure six? Measure five. Okay, so measure five, I'm probably just going to program this in. So we have five going, and there's always a start of uh, beat four of, of uh, measure five. You have G, A, B, A, B, C, B. That's right. Okay. And then this part here probably is the same. There you go. Let's do that first. And 
this is measure six, you have which is right. Next, moving on, we have measure seven, which is this again. You have eight going Oh, actually, da 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 da. That, so this is a, a D now. Okay, and then on this part it goes an octave higher. It goes to A, B, C, B, C, D, E. Okay, cool. Really pretty stuff. E, F sharp, G, F sharp, G, A, D. Okay, keep it going. F sharp, G, A, G, A, D. Oh, actually, um, I gotta go h octave higher on this one. By the way, if you guys are, uh, um, watching me work um, and you're curious about how this score looks, go to imslp.org and look up uh, the Boozy and Hawks score and you can just kind of follow along, so to speak. I, um, again, uh, I am cutting a big chunk of the middle sections, but basically I'm, I'm just cutting from measure 80. I said uh, measure 79 to 270. Oh, so yeah, just the stuff in the middle from uh, 80 to 270, I'm cutting out completely. There are repeats, so it, it gets complicated because um, on the DAW, there's you know there's no like repeats unless you're using like Fruity Loops or something. Um, with most DAWs, you know you just have to do the math and add the extra number of bars in the repeat, um, and so it it, so it gets hairy. Uh, the way I'm going to combat that down the road is I'm going I, I'm just going to put the measure numbers in here with a marker so that we can kind of follow along but anywho going back to uh, this holy cow <laughs> okay let's keep it going so you have E F sharp G F sharp G A B and I, I'm glad that you really enjoyed this by the way I saw your note there uh, Don Don Ranger Power, is that, am I reading that right? Yeah, Don Don Ranger Power. Cool, welcome. Um, let's keep it going, shall we? So we have 12, B. Hmm. So let's go down this B here. Okay. And let's find one that's kind of a more of a run. I guess these are our not really runs. Uh, what I mean is a, a, a true ascending line. So like we have C sharp D. Like that. Um, after the G, it's an E. And then this one here is D sharp. Okay, uh, 15, or no, 14 is. All right, um, this probably will do. Let's go D sharp. Go down. D sharp. C sharp. 
That's right. Okay. Did I do that right? Or am I am I smoking something here? Um actually this is <laughs> I'm doing the flute one part on the wrong beat. This is actually it should be B C sharp. It's like something seemed off. Uh B C well B A B back to B. That's it. Wow, that sounds the very uh, exotic sounding. Okay, anyways, um, last one would be da 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 da. This is not really a run that does that, huh? So, all right, that's fine. I'll just copy and paste and program as we go. So, there's that, and it goes B A G. A, G, F sharp, E. Okay. Whew. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot of work to get through that, but you know what? What's nice about this is this is uh, it for all the instruments on the first 16 bars. Only thing we'll do is maybe shape the sound a little bit. So let's go here and... What I'll do is I'll just delete that. Okay, and then this would be the start of the next one. So maybe on this part, uh, theoretically, it might be a little quieter because uh, clarinets come in, and so it's uh, making some way for that, but uh, not much. Um, so let's do the other one now. Same thing. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Man, it's, it's so pretty. This stuff is like, wow. Th these are the things I want to learn and get better at. Okay, so there is that. The The string is, is, is quite loud compared to all of this. Um, so let's just bring those two down. Okay, so the only thing I'm, I'm worried is at the end of each of those notes, this should be kind of short. Um, I'm curious, I'm just, just for the hell of it, what if we change everything to staccato? What would that sound like? So it doesn't sound as good. You can really tell the difference. However, um, if we were to do, uh, let's say, a hybrid of those, how would that sound? Uh, meaning, if the last notes of each of these, which would take a bit to um, program in, basically, but if I were to add a little staccato on top of those notes, Kind of interesting to do it that way too. Um, we can make it a little louder, or you're quieter. Maybe the opposite. Right, and then this one's uh, a little too long anyway. So I'm glad I'm looking at this in a different lens here. Um, so yeah, th this is a, a quick uh, cheater way to do it, but basically. 
I'm going to do that. And uh, let's actually discolor these. Do you guys understand uh, how Cubase color codes their instruments and whatnot? Um, if, you, if you go here uh, with the, um, the outsides of these, you have the different colors. So uh, I'm just going to color them differently so I can see them a little bit more clear. Guy Shard, would rec recreating a Dorco Pro be cheating? It, you know, um, it's, it's not uh, that, I mean, it, with Dorco, you do have parameters of all the options to, to change the CC data and stuff. Um, but uh, one thing with Dorco is you would have to uh, spend a lot of time to recreate what I have done in Cubase with my Vienna Ensemble Pro setup. Um, it would take probably months to <laughs> get that all dialed down, but it, that would be cool. I just, I'm, I'm more comfortable doing all of this inside of Cubase. And there's just a lot more uh, mixing type of options that you can do down the road. Um, not not um, to even mention what I was able to do here with uh, the recording, right? And have that with the tempo track and just have it side by side. I don't think you can really do that in Dorico. So that, unfortunately, that's kind of what we're looking at. So um, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through here. And this is just like a game now. It's just um, pin, pin the last note. And we're going to take, ooh, not the note down, but the articulation down to where it should go. I don't know if this works. Let's see. Does that work? <laughs> I don't think it works. I did something else. Um, okay. Well, then let's just do it here. Boom. Okay. So then same thing. Let's go to the orange. And uh, it's actually a little easier to do it here. So let's just click on here. Do, 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 do. Did I skip one? Let's see. Oh, yeah, this one here. And then so on. So go to 16. And then we'll go to staccato. Okay. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys see? Does that sound better? it makes a difference i think the staccato does sound better all right with that being said let's move on to me Ooh, measures 17 or 16 16 okay let's put a more a marker point on that and let's say this is the clarinet entrance and should we start there you know what let's keep with the flutes for a second so that we so we keep this seamless bed going of flute. So um, who wouldn't want that, right? A seamless bed of flute. Let's go to 16, first flute. Okay. Yeah, might as well have both up. Okay. Are there notes that I can copy and paste? Not really. These are, it's a whole different line. Let's see. Well, this one I can copy and paste, thank God. Although this is copied over. Okay. So this is the same thing. Da 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 da. And then here it goes to G. Okay. Uh, we do need to make sure that some of these notes that are staccato aren't really kicking out too hard. Um, I'm just looking at the, the velocities, you can tell. Let's actually just double check on the orange as well. I think we're good. Okay. So we have that. Moving on. Let's, let's make a goal. Um, for this next run or next section, let's go till measure 20... Um, 
I'm not sure. Oh, okay. That should be good. Da -da 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 -da. It's uh, measure 28. So on here, that would be... Is it over here? So this part. So uh, we're going to go all the way till where the strings come in. Da -da 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 um, anyways, okay, so let's do that now. Let's go to 28. And you know what? I'm going to make a marker so I don't forget in case I forget that number. And I'll just say strings. Okay. Kind of have to think like a conductor in a sense when you're doing this. Um, it's fun to, to really analyze and get intimate with all the notes too. This is partially why I opted it for this way. Um, I did actually download the MIDI files down here. And you can too, um, if you go to the classical music uh, archives.org, I believe, something like that, you can, you can sign up for a free account and you have like a certain number of downloads. Although I'm not sure how accurate these were to begin with. I mean, it looks okay. But at the same time, it just didn't line up properly. And I also thought this is more of an educational thing. So um, might as well go through the, the proper steps and process for it. So 18, um, we have da 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 da. Okay, moving on. G A G A G F sharp G A B D. So it's this repeats. Okay, so one of these sounded funky. Not sure. Maybe um, we might have to like push this in a little bit. Yeah, sounds better in time that way. Okay, let's just uh, see. I'm just gonna copy two at a time. So I'm kind of seeing the patterns now. Okay, and then might as well just copy that actually. And then. Wow, so that's an interesting line. These are lines I actually wouldn't even think of, to be honest. Um, the way the directions are going. But you know, it's really up to the, the ear, what what your ears are hearing too. So, um, G, B, E. Okay. That's it. Moving on. Uh, someone asked a question. Oh, guy, um, should you turn velocity down on the spiccato? It may sound a bit loud, but uh, I don't know. Should you turn the uh, on the pizzicato for the strings? Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I, I can probably dial that down just a little bit. Velocity is probably the better way to go than the main volume. Dar Darko Pro would generate the MIDI files, but then, yes. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Um, that I I do that too. I, I just think you know, man, it, it's a lot of work to do all of that. But then, yeah, you at least have those files, right? And it's nice to have. So um, here's twenty three. You have G. So this is a repeat of that. Okay, and then D sharp. Wow, that is cool. Let's find a line that's similar to that. Probably this one. Okay, maybe we can bring up some of those notes. Um, well, actually, th this is legato, huh? Yeah, so that's all done in the faders. I'll, I'll do that in the faders. Then you have measure 25. 
So maybe this one. Cool. Next. Um, that's an A, right? A, B, A, G, F sharp. Oh, actually, no. Okay, let's see what I did right. A, B, A, G, F sharp. Okay. Da 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 da. Twenty seven. We're almost there. G A G F sharp. E and then A sharp. Yeah. Interesting. That's right, huh? Okay, so we'll have to analyze maybe um, from measure 1 to 28 in a second. Let's uh, leave it at that, perhaps. Okay, let's go to the next ones. Oh, and Sam, uh, you said, should you turn the velocity down? Oh, on the flutes. Uh, oh, on the, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, you mean the staccatos? The, okay, yeah. I think it's fine. Um, I in the long run, we'll we'll, we'll kind of tweak it as we go, but I think it'll be okay for now. Um, at least in my headphones. Okay, so let's go to the flutes of sixteen. Second flutes. All right. Moving on, we have this, and now I'm reading the upper stems. This is... E, D sharp, E, G, A, uh, C. Okay, so this one also kind of has this um, timing issue. That's probably better. So um, let's do that. All I'm doing is pushing, pulling that in slightly. And it's not on every single one of those. Maybe on, on these will, one, if I keep copying and pasting it will, but let's see, we have G, A, Okay, I think I skipped one, huh? So we have this one, 17. I think I'm just repeating it, if I'm not mistaken. Looks right. Oh, this actually goes to B. And, and that, to me, uh, you were saying, Sam, that some of those notes at the end were loud. On, on this uh, second flute, at least, I feel like it's a little too quiet. So I'm bringing those up. Um, over here, you have... G A G F sharp G B uh, let's bring that closer A is that oh no it's gonna go down uh, 
Okay, good. So then we have this part, this A, B, A, G sharp, A, B, C. I think this is a copy of that. Oh, it's a little bit different actually. This goes C and this goes down to B. Okay, and we'll, we'll have to shape some of that uh, in the faders again. Uh, let's see, next. Okay, moving on. G A F sharp. Oops. Next part is measure 24. We have A, G, F sharp, E. Okay. And then G, F sharp, D sharp, E, G. Yeah, sure. Next, we have key F sharp, D. D sharp, C sharp. Interesting, D sharp, C sharp. Okay, and we'll leave it there. So, uh, second flute is actually the higher one, huh? That's interesting. Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to put that up like that. So, visually, that makes more sense to me as well. And might as well um, add a note, the starting note, just so we have that going as well. This note should be a D sharp. Okay. All right, so let's uh, do some fader work here. One thing I've noticed is this volume is somewhat soft uh, still. So I'm just going to bump up both of these. I think I already did that. Flutes. Oh, I did. Uh, okay. I'm mean, not crazy. I'm um, just seeing, getting confused here. So you got that. Let's see if that also helps. Okay, I'm going to do, um, because I brought it up just a bit, I'm going to give it some more wiggle room in case I need to get more loud. Um, maybe also bring up the uh, this stuff. Yeah, the CC7. Bring this down just slightly. Alright, let's start from the beginning and, and hear how it sounds starting at 18 or 16. Cool. Um, just just reevaluating if I should uh, do any changes here. I'm I'm gonna might as well now that we have a bigger picture of things. Let's just recreate this and start over. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, that harp is is actually a little loud. So 
let's go there and, and tweak that as well. Okay, all right, going back. Hey, thank you, guy. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's too too quiet still. Yeah, that uh, staccato is too loud. I see where you're saying, Sam. I'm purposely making this part a little quieter because of the clarinets coming in. Okay, I'm excited to analyze these chords. Next. Well, quiet. Okay. All right. So uh, we're missing out of that uh, clarinet and violins for the measure 16 to 28 now. Um, let's just tweak a couple things over here in me measure 7. That's kind of loud. That's, oh, not this one, but this last note here is kind of loud. But uh, not... That that was probably the main one that really bugged me. It really popped out. Right there, this one. That one too. Since these are all legatos, doesn't really matter, huh? Okay. Great. So far, so good, and this is with tempo track added in, so it, it, it does sound kind of funky um, at some places, uh, meaning is a, that push and pull maybe is too drastic on one spot. Right there. So that, that's where I felt like a more mechanical push than anything, so I'm just going to level this these two out. Okay. I think that's it. So now let's move on. Um, let's add, uh, shall we add clarinet? Let's, let's add clarinet. And then we'll do strings. Okay, so measure 16, new instrumentation. We'll use clarinet solo from Spitfire, and um, this is the second clarinet. Okay, so first clarinet uh, will be the higher note this time. And well, I actually meant to do this one. So on this, we'll go, I'll, I'll just write it in or play it in one time. And let me double check. It looks like clarinet, at least on this one, is this clarinet in C. Um, if I look over here, does it say that? Yeah, it's in C. So that's why the key signature is the same, but something to double check. So going here, we have oh, you know, <laughs> that was just horrible. Um, 
Let me do that with a click though. Okay, all right, so that's kind of a basis for the next parts. Then we have, okay, legato those guys. Let's uh, make these 16th notes. Now, when, when the legatos happen, all of a sudden, timing becomes an issue on some of these. Sometimes you have to push it in. I don't know. That's what we might have to do. So on the last note, though, we can do staccato as well. But uh, let's see if it works. Kind of sounds a little um, too synthetic. So let's just go back to Legato and connect that and make this short. Uh, but not too short. <laughs> let's go. I guess that, that'll do it. an eighth note length. So we have that. Um, let's get the volume. Okay. And there's two of these. So uh, it's similar to what the flutes are doing. I don't think this is uh, doubling anything. This is actually new stuff. So um, 18, did I do this right? I'm on the wrong measure. So this should be measure 16, my bad. Yeah, and I'm looking at the right stuff. It, it is still uh, playing new material, like I said before, but I just put had that on the wrong spot. Oh yeah, cool. This is kind of like a, a fugue or so, like a, not a fugue, more of a round in a sense. Like everyone's just kind of doing their thing. Um, I don't know if it's a true round, but um, that's what it reminds me of. So then you have a uh, 17. E, D, C, D, C, B, A, or D, B, C. Cool, and uh, maybe we can draw that in or why don't we use this nice range tool that uh, Cubase has uh, made like that okay and then same ordeal so how should I do this would it be easier to just go something like this And just program in every single thing. And then uh, just do it as we go. Let's try that. Let's try that approach. So 18. Just got to make sure I, I'm keeping track of where I'm at. So 18 is D C. D, C, oh, look at that. Some of these actually uh, duplicated on top of each other. Let me just delete duplicates there. So where am I? D, C, B, it's a run. Cool, and then we have D, C. I think this is actually a same repeat, so let's just do that. Uh, let's hear that again, actually. Uh, let's bring these in just a little more. Okay, that works. Moving on, 20. C. A, B, okay, da 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 da. What's this one? C, B, C, B, A, E.
Okay. 22. E, D, E, C. B. Okay. Same thing here, though. Um, if I may, I just gotta push some of those notes that slur in a little more in. Cool. So, like these guys that I copy and pasted will all be like that. Might as well just do that. The clarinets behave a little different than the flutes on Spitfires. It looks like, and that's you know, understandable. <laughs> It's really hard to program uh, instruments. So, yeah, B, A, F sharp. Oh, it's just the same run, isn't it? From the previous measure. 24, you yeah. have. We're going to go down. You know, I think I'm uh, one octave. I just realized I might be one octave off from all of this. So let's just double check here. Uh, yeah, I think I did this perhaps uh, too too low. It probably sounds better, but it does um, it does kind of sound a bit high now. So C, C3 is actually in Cubase C3 is C4, right? Middle C. So I think I did that right. Never mind. Okay, I'm I'm uh, just making sure, guys. Just making sure. So then we have here. Okay, twenty-four. Then would be G sharp. Uh, no, excuse me, F sharp. Going down to E. Or C sharp. That one um, is a bit hard to see, but I'm thinking that's just C natural. Okay. All right, and then 25. We have B A G F sharp E. Almost there. The last two, 26 is C. B, back to C, A, and then F sharp. Is that right? Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, interesting run right there. And then 27 is B, C, A, B, G, uh, All right, we're in business, guys. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to read some uh, the messages. I, it looks like I missed some of your messages. Sorry. <laughs> That's why I leave it to the professionals. <laughs> um, yes, it is a lot of work to input notes into Dorico, but it makes you feel the music. Then comes the excitement to import it all in Cubase. Yes, that's definitely true. Because using libraries in Dorico is much too cumbersome. Yeah, it's not it's not a real DAW in a sense. It's it's interesting. The orange track is not as good, less humanized, but it is because of the library. Oh yes. Yeah, um 
And uh, if we get a chance, like maybe towards the very end of today's session, I, I might play around with um, layering or even replacing one of these flutes or uh, instruments just to kind of just see how, how it all fits in the, in the pieces. But anyways, uh, we're almost to the point where we can start adding uh, strings and, and this will be a completed section. So the clarinet 2 is the next part we have here measure 16 and this is what that that would sound like okay so we're uh, still doing legato mode let's um, put that in legato real quick all right all right and these are on the beats uh four or second beat of each measure in a sense I wasn't hearing anything. Okay. Yeah, oh, not bad. Let's see. Um, this one's a little bit behind. Oh, these are in third. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, I don't know what's going on here. There you go. Okay, so there's our starting point. Let's go a little shorter, if I may. And let's get cruising on here. So 17 is similar. But we're gonna go da 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 D. So so these last notes of each one sort of um, highlight like the chords in a sense. Okay, and uh, that'll be important to to um, keep in mind when we analyze chords. So eighteen. D, C, B, oh, it's similar to the other one. So if I pull up clarinet two, or actually first clarinet, I can probably just sort of copy that onto this side. But let's just double check notes now. D, C, B, A, G, D, yeah. So this one is like a full on uh, echo. If I'm going to solo that, just clarinets. That's cool. These are things that I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it's a simple idea, but it it's, it makes so much sense. Okay, so then if you go here to this, um, it's the same thing instead of going to B though. The last note is E. Okay, and now uh, we'll, we'll do some fader pass, hopefully make it a little more expressive there. Um, moving on to 21, or is it 20? 20. Okay, now we have a different run, so let's go ahead and find a line that works. Maybe this one. And this part is C, D, B, A, E. Uh, one more note though. A. Okay. Oh, we could use a little more reverb, I'm thinking, maybe on on these clarinets too. Maybe a combo reverb or something to help get this more washy. Let's see. 
We can go ahead and 21. Looks like it's similar. Except again, it, it's descending. The last note descends from the A here to a G. C, D. Let's just double check those notes one more time. Yeah, it looks like that. And then here we have C, E. C. B, A, G, F sharp, and the last one's E. So it's a nice, oh, so look at that. I didn't realize it's just echoing again. Huh, okay, fascinating. Um, next, you have E, C, B. Okay, now the last note, last two notes are wrong. Like that. Cool. Maybe go a little longer on on these two. Actually, let's go longer on all of these. Anyways, moving on. Um, after that B, we have C. C B A um, G F sh oh, back to A and the last is C B. Okay, all right, almost there. Twenty five. Twenty five is B. Same note as the uh, clarinet one. A, G, F sharp. Last note is a D sharp. Ah. If it's a D sharp, there's probably like a B chord in that. Okay, all right. Here's 26. All right, this is a opposite type of direction. So these guys go down here. First note is a D, E, F sharp, E, F sharp, A, G. Okay. And last would be this one, which is uh, G looks like G F sharp. Okay. All right, and let's make these last notes again, just a little longer. Okay. Same with the other side. Are these, yeah, they're pretty long. Okay. Um, clarinet is more or less done. Let's just uh, use some faders now. Hooray, hooray. Crescendo here. Okay. I talked about maybe adding some more reverb in, so let's do that. Uh, for now, I'll just put it in my sends, and if I need to, maybe I'll turn on like a combo reverb or just add more reverb um, in a different insert. 
The other thing was maybe on the clarinet we can also um, EQ some of the harshness. So just like a little bit around here and same. Let's also talk about panning real quick. So right now the, the flutes are panned. Uh, let's double check. I think it's on the left side. Nope, it's more on the right, like center, off center, right? Flute two is on the left. That's kind of cool. down just a little bit without the strings you don't you really hear that staccato huh okay anyways so flute one is panned quite right compared to the flute two excuse me um i'm just wondering uh if we should fix that now so for one we can narrow the image and Keep it a little more centered. Okay. Let's go here and let's narrow the image and also kind of keep it centered, but maybe uh, keep that uh, that format so um, slightly off to the left. So there's a little bit of separation. Why not? Let's get a, a bit wider. Okay, that's not doing too much, um, but I think uh, once you add strings and other things, it'll, it'll be nice. Okay, so then same thing with the clarinets. I feel like clarinets is a little bit wide. It's really wide, right? Um, seating position. I kind of like keeping the woodwinds more in a center, in a sense. Um, but I don't know, yeah. But let's just double check clarinets real quick. So it looks like clarinets are, are both off to the right. That's okay, because the, the, the violins really make up the other side. I'm just wondering if I should narrow that as well. Um, why not? Uh, let's go and do a little bit of that too. Okay. I don't know if that will help or make it worse, but uh, generally it does uh, uh, give it a little bit more presence. I've noticed when, uh, when you narrow an image. Um, okay. So that is that. Let's just keep going. Let's add strings to the mix. Strings is 16, measure 16, I mean. Okay, and it's just more plucky stuff. So let's go right to it. Bring it out from there. Here is strings. All right, let's see if I can, you know what, what I'll do um, I did make a different template track early on. So let's go to the other one. I'm just going to plug this in nice and slow. Um, should I do it with other instruments? Yeah, let's do it with other instruments. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's painfully slow, but let's see if I can do it in one pass. One, two, one. Oh, but you know what? I have to count, huh? <laughs> so, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, one, two, three, and then one, two, six, one, two, three, four. Let's practice. One, two, three, five, six. All right. I think I can do it. What's this high note? 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all right, let's try. Let's see if I can do one pass. Four, five, six. Okay, so almost in one pass. Um, oh, I I didn't record, but this is a retro respect, uh, retrospective recording. I mean, I did one note that was wrong. C F sharp. Is that right? Oh, no, it was. I guess I did play it right. C F sharp. Okay, I thought I played that wrong, but I just kept going. C F sharp. C sharp. E. Okay, so notes are right actually. So then let's um, put this up and make sure that that is in time. Um, put in eighth notes, do our soft quantize. Okay, especially with these ones, these should be in uh, really locked together, these uh, divisies. And anytime there's divisies, it probably should be a little quieter, right? Because you're d dividing up between players, so maybe do that. Same with these guys. This is probably a little loud. Okay. Now let's just bring these guys down a bit. Okay, so let's do the same thing now with uh, the second strings. Painfully slow, but to get accuracy. So, shall I look at uh, these? Don't have double stops or divisies. So, and I'm not sure if these are double stops now. As opposed to divisies, I was assuming they are divisies, but they don't say that. Let me just double check. Pits, no. But I mean, depends on the co conductor. I would say the conductor might want to divisi those up um, for cle cleaner attacks and whatnot. Okay. Anyways, so let's go to that same spot. Here is sixteen. Up on, on me here. Try again. One, two. Last note, it should be F sharp. Okay, everything else was good. I maybe played one note a little late, but that's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix the timing on some of those. Okay, and let's go full tempo this time. Oh, that happens when it thinks it's highlighting both. Okay, so we have that. Wow, that's really fast now. <laughs> okay, let's look at the volume as well. Cool. I think that sounds awesome. Um, maybe on this on these high notes, we still have to just bear in mind 
you know, we don't want to overpower the, the flutes there. So there's that. The next part would be then uh, there's a little viola that comes in, kind of like a horn. Nice. Well, um, you know, as far as uh, the Moldell, yeah, it's that's, that's a classic. It's one of those pieces that everyone should know, at least watch or hear in a live setting. It's, it's magical. Okay, so we have here um, measure 24. Measure 24 with viola. And should I just do this one, this little performance legato one? Was it? Why not? Let's try that. And depending, we could keep it going. I'm just curious how that would feel. But um, here we go. Okay, it's kind of like that. Uh, did I record that in? Okay, so it's a little bit wonky on this part. But this is the idea on what that says. And if you guys um, want to see what it looks like on the score, back over here, 28 is what I'm looking at. Um, okay, so here's the viola that comes in 24, 25, 26, 27. 28 has these uh, slurs just going back and forth. It's like a slow trill, basically, uh, A to B. So a whole note trill, and it just does that. It just keeps going. So you could do uh, two things. You can play uh, all the notes as is, live like this. And I don't think I did that right, because um, I don't think there's enough notes now. So if I go like this and just um, put it in this way, it would work. So let's try that like that okay and then basically you would be um, I know there's uh, technically you're going up till four so one two three one and two and three and four and five and six and um, however I'm just gonna tie it as one I don't know if that makes a huge difference uh, maybe it would with once all the other instruments play Ah, should I just do it like that? Okay, let's just do it like that. So I'm going to put give a little break between that. Um, same with this one. Let's see what it sounds like. It's a little wonky, as you can hear. It's, you know, the script's like, whoa, what's, what's happening? <laughs> but this could work. So let's try it. Okay. Maybe I went down too much. Let's try again. Maybe it's crescendo. All the way. Okay. So to me, my ears don't really take that very well. So we might have to use a different one. So if we go here, let's let's try like a decorative um, patch that has. I, I mean, we can even do a, um, a trill. Let's try this one. Well, duh. that's not going to work. Um, but if I go like this, and it should be a whole note trill. So that's not, that's probably not going to work. Well, I mean, yeah, it might if you get dialed in right. It's too fast. It's too fast. Okay. Well, I tried. And then, so if that's not going to work, let's do something else. So we could, we could perhaps look at the core. And instead of a legato, let's do 
like a short brush. Nope. Staccato. Nah, it's not the sound. Tenuto. Nope. <laughs> okay, so if that's not going to work, we might have to try a different approach with not Spitfire. Um, one library I have in mind that may work for, as a substitute, um, and it, it, it it's kind of, uh, they, they sound very similar in some ways, is Pacific, and turning the Pacific violins on with some legato. Let's hear how that sounds. Oh, you know what? This is not violin. This is viola. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Bring it down here. Yeah, so because of how fast it's going, it might just, you might even not s hear the difference. Okay, so the, the question now is what sounds like more realistic in a sense? Oh, oops, didn't want that. I want this one. And I think we can't be so technical. Let's just uh, go ahead and tie that. Uh, over or slur it over. Okay, let's listen to both of these. Let's listen to one. Let's listen to the other. Ah, uh, that's that's rough. Um, don't know which one sounds better. I I think maybe Pacific sounds slightly better, but it's not it's not making a huge difference. So. Let's just stick with the Spitfire for now. Okay. Anyways, that's uh, where we are with that. And we'll add more on the next session. With the last uh, few minutes we have, I wanted to analyze the chords real quick. So, um, what we'll do is we'll play it through once just so we can enjoy the music and then um, make any tweaks and, and sort of analyze as we go. Okay, so here's what we could do. Someone pointed out, I think it was Guy Shard, that uh, the flute two sounds not as convincing as the first one. I, I actually agree. There's something funky about it. Um, and I'm just wondering, maybe if, let's say we tried a different approach and uh, loaded a different instrument in, how would, let's say, the east-west flutes sound compared to this uh, second flute? And uh, maybe instead of doing that, let's just mute that. Okay, but as I do this, I need to reprogram some things probably. Let's double check. Uh, luckily, all my psychologists are seeing. Let's hear it solo. Okay. Um, I don't even hear anything. There you go. Okay, so that's the east-west stuff. It's a bit loud, so let's bring it down. Let's bring down this. Okay, and um, it's still kind of loud actually, but uh, more importantly, I think this needs a little bit of a push um, behind the beat. Okay, let's hear the difference. It's interesting. Um, I kind of like this one better. It is louder though, so objectively louder and then Okay, 
and then this could be just slightly pushed forward now. Okay, am I missing any other instruments? I don't think so. <laughs> Technology, yes. I'm kind of bummed that this part it doesn't really work as as it should. They they both sound kind of funky. Maybe I'll I'll keep this one in there just so that uh, it, it gives it a little bit more lush um, and a blur effect, so to speak. I'll, I'll I'll think about how we can make that sound better. Um, anywho, let's go ahead now and analyze chords as I mentioned. So you have E minor in the beginning, right? Okay, so real quick, we are in E minor probably for a good chunk, um, to be honest. So those first four measures were in E minor. On measure five, it goes E, B, yeah, that's also E minor. Okay, here's six. Okay right there it's a chord change so this is going to G G and D so is it are we uh, in oops G chord probably a G major um, and I can sort of pluck along with that and then it goes to or just the open G Okay, boom, what is that? That's a C. I'm actually um, thinking this is an inversion. So E minor, um, it could be actually a G, like a secondary dominant kind of thing. Um, but my gut is saying it's an E minor over G. Okay, so then over here we have a another C. Looks like it C E C. So so in between that. Okay, what note is that? Or chord? This is G G D G. It's a G major. Kind of like before, huh? Like this guy. Okay, well, let's leave the other one as E minor over G, and then this one will be an uh, actual G. Um, then go back to C. Okay, so on this chord, what is that? Looks like another G. Uh, is this a... Uh, so this is an E minor. So it's kind of over another G, like a higher G. And then, okay, what, what's this one? Then you have A, no, excuse me, F sharp, C, A. It could be a D chord without the D, or it could be a F sharp uh, diminished. It's probably F sharp diminished. Okay, and then this chord here is an E, C sharp, G. Um, C sharp diminished. So let's play that real quick. So on the keyboard we have um, and the next part is a probably a B. So it goes to the dominant. If you want to be technical, this over a D sharp. 
Okay. Next, you have uh, B A F sharp. B A F sharp. So this would just be a like a seventh chord. B seventh. Okay, and then it goes back to E. This is the the first round. Clarinets come in here. So all, all this little plucky stuff, that's probably all in E minor still. Okay, what is that? Let's just double check what we're doing here. This is A, E, C sharp, A. And I, I suppose if, if you want to look what I'm looking at, I mean, this is a visual here. Uh, this is uh, everything. Maybe it'd be easier to look just at the strings. Oops, and get rid of that. So, well, this is basically what I'm looking at on the sheet music. You have uh, this chord. Any uh, takers here? Actually, I could probably do most of this in here, so let's just write it in here. So this would be... Uh, an A minor, I believe, and then keep going. So, but you know, it actually starts here. Yeah, that sounds about right. A minor. Okay, right here, and then these are little hints of what this chord is. So you have. E goes back to E minor. Okay, a little louder. Okay, so th this is a different chord. It looks like it's spelling. Um, and, and this is with the woodwinds. They land on a, um, a set of notes. Looks like B, F sharp, D sharp. So this is a, a D sharp, or excuse me, a B chord. But there's an A on the in the viola over here. So with that, uh, this is probably all holding on a B dominant chord till the very end. Or like a pedal. Okay, yeah. So I'm kind of here like. would be oh, so it's a C oh, okay So these are chords within a, a B um, underlay, if that makes sense. So like there's kind of a, a B thing happening all the way, um, but inside of that you have like this chord was a A uh, dominant chord, dominant seven, or uh, diminish, A diminished seven. It's a full diminished though. I've noticed on Cubase you can't do that. You can't notate full diminishes, so I'll just say A diminished. And then here, this is like an E minor. Um, so it's like, let me just play this on piano. It makes sense of it. 
Actually, no, I'm wrong. This is a F, F sharp diminished, kind of like before. And then the next one probably follows suit with a C sharp diminished. Was it a C sharp diminished? C. So this is a B. Okay, but this chord now I'm having second thoughts. Is it? Hmm. Mm, C sharp diminished. That makes sense. Or A sharp diminished, A sharp diminished, like that. So that that's basically what that's playing. So yeah, like. Um, the end of that right there uh, yeah so that, it's starting to make sense um, a lot of cool diminished chords in this little sequence um, I, I figured a lot of it would be uh, hidden in the notes there to, to extract but now now it's all starting to make sense okay that's it for today guys um, I hope this was uh, educational for anyone that's watching um, again, this is really for me to uh, learn as well and, and also put my uh, virtual orchestration skills to the test uh, to see how it, it would sound in a, in a light like this. Um, before I go, I always like to play the music one more time, at least a work in progress version of that. Uh, we've done 28 measures. How many measures are there total? Okay, there's 261. Um, luckily, some of these are more repetitive, and maybe we can copy and paste some of them, but um, this will be a battle for sure. Let's go ahead and press play. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. Um, let me put my camera back on. Well, I, I, I just replied to your comment there, Sam. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. It's something about the being broken. I thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, it's fine. Uh, no worries. For me, who knows what will happen, you know, if not 5, 10, 20 years from now with these streams right maybe some aliens from outer space will learn how to compose music <laughs> okay well anyways it was a pleasure guys and uh, like always thanks for watching i'll see you next time have a good one